Hi, Jess Tibetz here from Jess Tibetz Counseling and Accomplish Magnificent Things. You can find both of those websites with the .com behind them. Jess Tibetz Counseling.com and Accomplish Magnificent Things.com. I'm a psychotherapist and a certified Myers Briggs trainer, and I have promised to bring you guys some information on type, kind of weekly, if you will. Um, I like a little different spin on type. I like to dig in a little bit deeper, use some of my uh, therapy background. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the ex extroverts and introversion dichotomy, and I'm going to use one of these fabulous tools that I work off of um, from the Center for Application of Psychological Types. And I'm going to talk to you just for about two or three minutes about what truly extroversion and introversion is. I think it's the most widely talked about type and the type dichotomy because it's just out there. People always use those languages. They talk about, oh, you're so extroverted, oh, you're so introverted, but there really is quite a bit more to it. And I will talk about that on other videos as well. But I wanted to um, just talk to you a bit today about what it means to be extroverted. And extroverts really like to place themselves and get their energy from external things. They like to put themselves out into the world. That is, again, where they gain their energy. And they're also, which I think is a really fascinating thing about types, is that this is their best self. If you're an extrovert, your dominant type is putting that out into the world. So it, you can really think of it as wearing your heart on your sleeve if you will. You truly are putting your best self forward. Introverts, on the other hand, are much more energized by their inner world. So if they go to a party or a networking event or something, their energy typically is much more drained because they're having to work at being out at these kinds of events. So it's very, very important for them. Very important for introverted children as well. When they come home from school, to be able to take some downtime, to be able to be alone and recharge themselves. Extroverts, on the other hand, when they've spent an entire day alone, they need to re-energize themselves by being with people. So extroverts can get very, very depressed and can get a little lonely when they're by themselves. And introverts, on the other hand, can feel that way when they're around people. It's just too much. Um, and of course, there's different levels, there's different spectrums, there's a slight preference and a very strong preference for being introverted or extroverted, which makes a difference. Uh, and introverts, lastly, they save their best selves for themselves. So where an extrovert is wearing their, their best self on their sleeve and giving that to the world, introverts, on the other hand, are holding their best self for their self. I think it's such a beautiful thing about introverts that they keep that for themselves. So introverts very often are a little bit harder to get to know and it's not because they're shy or reserved, it's really just because their inner world is saved for themselves. And so you have to get quite close to them in order for you to find that out about them. I'll talk about auxiliary functions in another video, but that is what the introverts show the world, is their auxiliary function. So it's quite a fascinating dichotomy, and there's a lot more to it, but I wanted to start with this little intro. So thank you so much for listening, and stay tuned for more to come. Thanks. Bye.